Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the final word from Gibraltar nil, Republic of Ireland 1. Jeff Hendrick at the goal. A horrible, windy day out in Gibraltar. Um, horrible pitch as well, but it looks to be. Why am I tossing again? Um, oh, we were joined by Ashton Dunbar from the DLR Waves as well. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Needed to give you an introduction yeah. there. Sorry, right, Ryan Brock. Um, disappointing because, you know. I suppose it's the first game under Mick. You want to see a result that maybe gives us a bit of confidence in the actual group um, because we have got a tough group. You've got Switzerland and Denmark still to play and it won't be an easy fixture against either side, home or away. So the Gibraltar game to start us off, I think we would have wanted it to go well, slightly better. It didn't really go to plan. Um, a lot of factors sort of messed it up. Again, the weather is a factor. And you know it's a sort of it's a kind of excuse you don't really want to have to use, but it was it was fairly windy and it wasn't it wasn't the best for conditions. Um, I think as well the fact that it was Mick's first game. Look, it didn't really it didn't really go to plan. Yeah, but I get that. But a win well, is a win. From, from uh, like, were you happy with the start eleven? Ashton, were you happy with the start eleven? I mean, it wasn't far off um, the start eleven. I actually had chosen in the start yeah. eleven. Show, except there was Hurlhin in for Arthur, mm. and there was. Um, McLean in for Brady yeah. Yeah. and Kyo for Egan and that was all there was only three that differences was it, yeah. so. I would like to see Egan start definitely Yeah. alongside Ian Stevens yeah apparently each other like, I know that's Shane Duffy's playing beside uh, John Egan but I would like to see instead of maybe Kyo like, yeah yeah, yeah I think he plays yeah. the ball a, a lot better yeah. really, on the ground which is judging by the conditions you know it would have been better to be playing along the ground but what can you do but you, you're happy enough what do you think of who and you got you end up getting yeah, on the match yeah yeah like, i love so. him like yeah i was definitely happy to see him in the squad considering that he, he joined up late with the squad you know so i i didn't actually think he'd be starting but i was very happy that he was he started because he's a creative player like we don't really have like that many creative players on the side without wes and i know he's gone now but and callum out as well i just feel like it's yeah and obviously he was 11 injured, so. tough lads like yeah that are gonna go out and nail everyone but Creativity, I think that it's something that we're lacking, like you know. Yeah, what were your thoughts on H- Um, I was very happy to see him involved. You know, he is a good player. I've um, only watched Aston Villa a handful of times this season, but of what I what I have seen, he looks like the kind of player that we probably do need in that midfield um, three. So it was good to see him play. Um, whether or not he was man of the match, I think it's probably debatable. Darren Randolph uh, made a stunning save there towards the end of the first half and um, had played well. When called upon, because again the conditions can be tough, especially for a goalkeeper in the wind. But um, he pl- he played well, Hurrahan. To be fair to him, I think he did deserve man of the match. Though, like if you look at the chances he created for us, like and he got the ball forward to McGoldrick as well for our goal, like you know, yeah. and the two crosses he gave into the box, like were yeah. very dangerous, you know. So we could have had two goals because of him, like you know, as well. Yeah, well, obviously the, the the first half it ended nil nil, but going to half time, what were what were your thoughts on you know the second half? Are you thinking we should be one to nil okay, or, or were you just like I'm just glad that you know we we can go out here now and probably get a couple of goals? Was that was that your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was actually very surprised. Yeah, that was nil at half time. I thought that we'd have hammered them. Like you know, that mean to be rude like to Gibraltar, but yeah, no, this is I was to not have that many fans. Yeah. I wouldn't imagine anyway. So. <laughs> I to, honestly like, thought, to be honest, yeah. when when. Half time is nil all, and then I started thinking to myself, like, you know, we really should be at least one nil up. You know, like, this this is Gibraltar at the end of the day, and, um, you know, I just started thinking, like, what are what are other people going to be saying about this? You know, what are what are BT or Sky going to have to say about this? Because, you know, it is a little bit embarrassing to be at, at, at nil all with Gibraltar. They, we are supposedly a level above them, but we didn't really show that, at least in the first half, and eventually got the goal in the second with, with Jeff, and it was a good finish, to be fair. But um, you know, I was I was a bit nervous at half time. I was like, what what way is this game gonna go? Gibraltar were having their chances. Darren made a super save to, to keep us in the game at half time because if they go in one nil up, you know, and and you know, it's it's on their side and the game's the game's um it's theirs to lose at that point. You know, I think what Mick said in, in the um post match press conference was that, you know, it was the kind of game where Gibraltar are the underdog, they've got nothing to lose, so they go for it and they try and try to to get at the team that they're playing, knowing that they're not expected to actually do anything. So the fact that Gibraltar were there, were pressing high, they had chances. I was I was quite nervous until that Hendrick goal came fairly early after the um, the second half. Um, it settled the nerves a little bit, and I thought, okay, here we go. The floodgates are going to open. But Gibraltar sort of sat back, invited the pressure, and didn't really 
seem to be bothered, to be honest. Yeah, well, like, I see if we're coming from like, with that, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, people are treating this game as if we lost the game, which is we still, yeah. we still won the game. No, I, I disagree don't. with that. A win is a win, uh, and there's no need to, to be complacent. It's Mick's first game. We may as well treat it like a pre-season because he hasn't had one as such. This yeah, is his, it's his first competitive yeah. match, you know? So well, that's, that's what I'm saying, is that uh, I just found, you know, the, the level of negativity and abuse coming towards the team was a bit, was a bit unwarranted. Yeah, like, I, I know it was 1-0, yeah. and Gibraltar yeah. are, you know... A, a, a minnow, so to speak, on par with the San Marinos and stuff like that. But yeah. still, we, we still won. Do you know what I mean? I know. Well, look, the thing that was surprising for me is, and if you look at it, is like we had 12 shots, they had eight, and they had a three on target, and we had four on target. So that's obviously not a good start at all either. No. So, look, if anyone watched the game, I'm sure they would have seen how bad the conditions were. It's easy to say, oh, yeah, excuses, excuses. But I find it. A lot of these people who are saying that have never actually played football and like, yeah, they're coming out you. and giving it the big one, but they done not play on a horrible Sunday morning in, yeah, I don't know, Buddy Brack or whatever. Yeah. Uh, horrible wins and you're trying to play and you're trying to play football. Like, it's Look, we got over the line and that was the main thing. And I, 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 like I was sitting in, in a bar yesterday and there was a guy sitting there because he didn't like Mick McCarthy, he was actually cheering on Gibraltar. So that's the level of stupidity that's you're, 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 you're dealing with in, in regards to just negativity towards our own national team. So I, I just don't care. And those types of people just have no time for it. So as soon as I heard that, I turned my back and didn't speak to him for the rest of the, for the, rest of the evening. Anyway, um, he was no friend of mine, by the way. He was just happened to be sitting I think it's just a, a really surprising result for a lot of people. And especially with Mick coming back in, I think that everyone thought like he'd work wonders. Like, I'm not saying he hasn't like, or anything like that. Yeah, it is very yeah. early on, but... It was a bit surprising the result, like to be yeah, fair. Yeah, but the, the the levels of positivity in the squad and the levels of you know the, the atmosphere looks good. Like even when they were celebrating the goal, they were all there together and stuff like that. Yeah. And no yeah. one looked like you no. Know, uh, An individual. Like, yeah, basically. Yeah. So in that aspect, I, I was very happy to to see that, and you know, it didn't look like it, someone who didn't impress me too much. And I was a bit surprised with Sean McGuire. I thought he would have done a lot better. Matt Doherty didn't get up, but again, I think it comes down to the weather. What what were your thoughts on on Shawnee um, Shawnee firstly, and then were you impressed with Matt Doherty being a chance? Um, I don't think Matt worked on the right hand side to the extent that we might have hoped he would. Um, I know you discussed it in your starting eleven video that that's probably where he'd play, and he did. But um, Football, yeah, but I don't. I, I genuinely don't think it's his fault as such. It's just I think it might have been the the manner of the game, the conditions, the way that Gibraltar sort of sat back a little bit towards the end. Uh, he, he didn't play poorly as such, he just didn't have a, a brilliant game. You know, we've seen him play so well for Wolves on an abundance of times in the Premier League this season. I think we were I think Ireland fans had high hopes in general coming into the game and I think that's why it was such a letdown that it was one nil. I think everyone started thinking this is a fresh start, it's a clean slate. You know, uh, Martin O'Neill, Roy Keane are gone now, so new management, maybe a new style of play, new players, Matt Doherty looks a a very very good player so it could be a very interesting campaign and then to start it with like a one nil result i think it was um a letdown yes but i think we had high hopes and to be honest if you look at it the conditions weren't favorable the match itself okay it didn't go our way but i think the reality is we come away with three points we're second in the group heads up for tuesday and then you know hope for the best against Georgia because we do get a win there it's six points from six and it's yeah, the perfect start it's exactly say, yeah. what you want you know so um Absolutely. let's see what we can do well the, the thing I, I just, and I'm going back to the negativity is just people people are going mad oh we didn't beat the five six seven. it doesn't matter we still still okay goal difference might be different but it's still the same yeah. amount of points I no had this argument on the way over yeah that the goal difference could catch us at the end of it because I think that like Switzerland Denmark will thump them and then at the end of it, all I could look at. Well, we still played them at home as well. So yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, but I'd say we'll look, see more. Goals, I think yeah. the, the telling game will be will be Tuesday, George. But were you, yeah, were, exactly. were, you were you impressed by? I I thought I thought McGoldrick done well for the goal. Yeah, um, he, did, he, actually, well, he did exactly yeah. what he's in the look, squad looks, to do. He set up the goal, so yeah. that's another assist from him. He hasn't been scoring, but look, yeah. confidence will be, will be high for him. But let's let's talk about the goal. So Dan, Dan Randolph kicks it out. You can actually watch it here. We have the clip of it somewhere. I'm gonna show yeah. you. Um. We might as well do a little run and commentary on it. But when it comes yeah. to Darren Randolph, kicks it out. Um, he seemed to pick out James McLean. He touched it down, yeah. I think, and falls down to it. Was it who or him? Yeah, yeah, yeah he played it, yeah. 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 He played it into McGoldrick, yeah. and then first time finish, Jeff Hendrick on yeah. his back four. It was a great goal. It was one of the best. <laughs> we haven't scored that many in, in recent times. It but, was a good play, like, yeah. But it was nice to see us, like, actually do, like, 
actually score a nice goal and people go, oh, it's Gibraltar. So what? It was no, it was a very good team goal, and um, you know there was, was at least four, what four or five passes. Five passes, and then yeah, goal. I think so. Yeah. As well, walk, yeah. The perfect well, start well. to the second half. It was actually the, the perfect. It was actually the perfect blend of route one and passing. Yeah, yeah. If you think about it, like you know, no, it, was, it, was a, it was a very good goal, and I suppose the only thing was I saw that goal in it go go in, and I thought, okay, that's it. Now we're gonna get the ball rolling, and it just didn't really work out that way. But the goal itself was very good and well worked. So I think Darren just saw James and went right. It's coming to you. James uh, plucked it out of the sky and then uh, found Hurahan, the Goldrick into Hendrick, and we know the rest. You know, it was a, it was a good team goal. That's all I have to say. Mm. And did anyone in particular impress you yesterday, other than Hurahan? Or is anyone that is there, is there positives that you can take out of the game going into Georgia, if if any at all? It'd be interesting to see if he goes with the same starting eleven now yeah. for that game, and I wouldn't actually mind seeing the start, same starting eleven just to see what would the difference be without the excuses. Like you know what I mean? I don't mean to sound rude, like excuses, but yeah. I'd like to see the same starting eleven go out to see what they'd have to offer. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I actually I agree with you there. I'd, I'd like to see the same the same team come out and play. Shame's captain. Matt on the on the right as well, yeah, and yeah, yeah um, see how it goes. Like totally that. in agreement with you there, and it'd be interesting to see if at the Aviva McGoldrick and, and McGuire can maybe link up a little bit better. Yeah, you know, because Absolutely. I think I think yeah. you're looking at that game, and it, I can't imagine how hard it must have been for a striker trying to you know get in. And you could see he was trying his hardest to, to try and get on the ball and, and and do things and all, but a lot of the time he was chasing shadows because there was Duffy was launching balls up. Yeah, yeah, endlessly, yeah. and it's just going nowhere, and you're just like, oh, and you're just giving the ball back to them, and then he had to go and chase it down. Then it was up the, the other yeah. pitch as well, and that's why I think maybe Doherty and that were a little bit unlucky as well. I think the Aviva, it's the use to the pitch to be more of an opportunity to actually get the ball down and maybe try and do a couple of things rather than the you know route yeah. one all exactly. the time. Maybe mix it up a little bit, but there were signs there for me that show like the goal. That we can mix it about. If yeah, we good. have better footballers than that, like than just going route one, like and hitting and hoping. As you said, like you know, there's lads in the team that can play good football, like so. Why not get it out from the back, like you know? Yeah, I think and like I appreciate Mick's honesty after the game. Uh, with his interview with Tony, I was wondering when he came out. Yeah. He goes, I hated every single minute of that. It was just such a horrible game, and he said, I knew it was going to be like that. But look, we got to win, and we go on out to Georgia. And then, look, it's it, it's George is going to be the, the one where we go right. Ultimately, is where he's probably going to be judged. Yeah. You know what I mean? If we come out, if we come out with this six points from six, uh, and we're sitting here on Tuesday night or, or Wednesday, sorry, um, after the game, uh, filming the final word, and we've got six points from six, I don't think anybody's going to be complaining too much. No. Yeah, no, absolutely. Laughing, yeah, absolutely. You know, because that was the that was the objective. Is this international, um, f- these two fixtures was to get in two results. Mick was going to get the squad in and get a buzz about them or whatever, and he seems to have done that. Look, he's got three points out of six so far, and we're halfway there. Um, but I think that's all we have to really say on the game. As I said, it was 1-0, it was and there wasn't a lot to talk about other yeah. than the, yeah. the horrible weather. Fair play to the travelling fans, so yes. we're going over. Um, travelling Huge thanks for Ashton for coming on the show, as always. Um, okay, thanks for having me. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. What did you think about the game? Are you negative Ned or positive Paul, like me? Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to like the video. We'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Thank you.